Hi guys, welcome to the first episode of Cooking with Taylor. Today we're going to make ratatouille, which is a French dish. Many of you may know it from the movie Ratatouille, where they made it and they served it to Ego, the big food critic, and it took him back to his childhood when his mom made it. If you pay attention, when they make it in the restaurant, that's kind of more of a fancier way of doing it. The thin slices, which is the way we're going to do it today. The way you see it in his, in his childhood when he goes back, that's more of the traditional way where you would do it almost like a stew. Where you would have the thicker chunks you'd be putting in a pot and you'd be doing it like that. So what you're going to need to make this... And you gotta definitely time is number one thing. You definitely need a lot of time on your hands. This is something that takes a long time to make. But it's definitely worth it in the end if you like baked veggies. What you're going to need, eggplant. Usually calls for what is called an Italian eggplant, which is significantly smaller. I live in Virginia. Usually can't find those here very difficult to find. So regular eggplant does work. Yellow bell pepper. That's more of something I added into the recipe myself when I was making it. That's more of my twist on it. Usually instead of yellow bell pepper, you would do potatoes. I've even seen radishes put in its place as well. Tomatoes. These are more of like your garden tomato, beefsteak tomato, nothing fancy. Yellow squash, definitely need yellow squash. That's a big part of it. And then green squash, AKA zucchini. So these are the vegetables that you will need. What you will also need for seasoning, rosemary and thyme. I get McCormick brand, let me bring it closer. I get the McCormick brand, but rosemary and thyme leaves, the whole leaves. That's what I recommend. You need a little salt and pepper. Sorry, that's a hair on my arm. You need a little salt and pepper. I do the McCormick peppercorn medley. So what this is, this is a mixture of peppers. You've got the different colored peppers in here. Most people know black peppercorns. This has got black, white, green, and red in it. I like it because you get a variety of flavors going on with it. You get different, different tastes, different spice going on with it. Salt, any kind of salt. I normally have my McCormick sea salt grinder, but I don't have it. I don't have it right now. Hold on. Okay. So as I was saying, you need salt, pepper, rosemary, thyme, the different vegetables. Uh, definitely need large bowls to put all your vegetables in. When you cut them up, you definitely are going to have to have somewhere to put them if you just have them on the cutting boards. If you just want to leave them on the counters, that's completely up to you. I don't do that. I like putting them in the bowls. What else you're going to need is something to put it in. I prefer stoneware. I prefer the ceramic when it comes to cooking. I feel like it cooks it a lot better, a lot more even. You don't have any mist spots in it, but if you want to use a pan, you can. You can use a metal pan. You can even go to the store and get the cheap $2, like a, the dollar store, the metal pans, the ones that are meant for it. You use it and you throw it away. Those will work as well. Just have to watch because you run into a little bit of a higher chance of your vegetables burning while they're cooking, while they're baking in the oven. So what you're going to put in here, you're going to still need some olive oil, 100% olive oil. Do not use tasting olive oil. Do not use light olive oil, 100% pure olive oil. In a small can of tomato paste, I usually use Hunt's. I like this brand. I like the way their tomatoes always taste, it always tastes, the, the, to me there's no chemical taste, there's no metal taste to it. You can get whatever brand you feel most comfortable with. So what we're going to start off with, we're going to, I'm going to show you how to put the paste in the pan and 
how to do that and then we're going to cut up the veggies put them in and then we'll put it in the oven another thing you need is parchment paper which is also the wax paper this is what I have what this is going to be used for is to put on top so when you're done placing everything in there, you're going to put the parchment paper on top. You're not going to have it go over the sides. It's just going to fit just the inside of your pan. So it's just going to go around on the inside of your pan. That's to help hold in the heat, and, but it's to let steam come out so it doesn't get as hot so that your veggies don't burn. And if my camera looks like it's a little bit down, that's my holder. My holder is a little bit off. I'm going, to try, I'm going to try and fix it, but let's go ahead and start cutting up the veggies and putting the paste in our pan, and then we'll cover it in parchment paper and put it in the oven. Okay, so here we can see our veggies that we're going to cut up. Um, let's go ahead and get them cut up first, and then we'll go ahead and put our paste in our pan. Let me move my spoon over. So here we can start off with, I'm gonna move my tomatoes over, just so I've got space. We're gonna start with the eggplant here. I sit and try to move the leaves up as much as I can, just so I can get as much of the eggplant as possible. This we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move away and try to cut as thin as possible. So if you see this slice, you see how thin it is. It's not always going to be perfect, especially with the eggplant. The way that the way that it is is already oblong shape to begin with. So just do the best that you can with it. And we're going to slice this up pretty quickly. This is my favorite knife that I'm using right now. I suggest getting a nice big knife to do this. Make sure it's nice and sharp. When you touch it like this, it should feel, it shouldn't feel smooth at all. Don't run it like this though. You will definitely, you will definitely cut yourself. I honestly don't even know what brand this is. Let's see. This one actually says Paula Deen on it. So you don't have to get her brand. And I'm not sure if they even sell her brand anymore. But there's definitely plenty of nice knives out there that you can get. So here it's getting a little bit trickier. You see the slices are getting bigger. I'm going to show you what we're going to do about that. So let's move our eggplant over. So with your eggplant, since you're going to have big slices like this, and obviously everything else is going to slice pretty small, what you can do is cut it into quarters. So cut it down the middle, turn it, and then cut it again. So you have these nice quarters. And we're going to move these over into one of our bowls. You can do multiple slices at a time. And like I said, it does not have to be perfect. It does not have to be exact by any means. Let's get the rest of these cut. Place it into here. And we'll move on to the next ones. Before this point, you're going to want to preheat your oven to 375. Put it on bake, preheat it to 375 before putting these guys in there. If you set it on 350, it's just going to take you a little bit longer to cook everything. And I'm not washing myself, which I should be, but I see that you all can see this. So next, let's go ahead and do the bell peppers. Everybody's got like their own way of cutting them but what I like to do oh no it's out of focus there we go what I like to do is I sit and I cut around 
the center of the stem and then you can pull it out. And then you can take it and just cut it. And you're gonna wanna do little wedges, skinny wedges. So just cut it like that. Little skinny wedges. And we're gonna clean these up later. I'll show you all how to clean these up, but let's get these cut up into our wedges as best as you can. Like I said, none of this has to be perfect. It absolutely does not have to be perfect. Because it's going in the oven, and it's gonna be baked, and it's all gonna shift while it's baking anyways. So just do the best you can here. We're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and clean this off. Anything you see on here that's white, that's like the core, just cut it off. Cut it off, move it over, get it out of the way. We'll clean off the seeds in a second. We're going to cut that off. That one looks good. Let's cut here. Be very careful. Especially if you have a very sharp knife. Go as slow as you feel you should. If you feel like, you know, you want to sit and go as slow as a the snail, then go as slow as a snail. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, you don't feel comfortable doing it. That's okay. You do not want to get yourself cut. It's all good. Now let's get this guy cut up. And hopefully you all can see what I'm doing. Just cutting them up into these little slices. And then we're going to clean. These all look good, except for this one. That piece is not what I want. Cut that off. I'm going to move this over this way so I can see what I'm doing. You see this white piece? It happens. You're going to lose some of the pepper. That's okay. You just don't want any of the core because it's just not, it's not going to taste good. Let's put it like that. It's not going to be delicious by any means. So let's set that down. We're going to turn the water on. Rinse the seeds off. In our sink, just hold them in your hand. Don't do a whole bunch at a time because you might lose one in the sink. Just hold them in your hand like this. And just run them over. You definitely want to clean your veggies before you start cutting into them and using them. You never know what's on them, who's been touching them. A lot of grocery stores now do have actual veggie wash. So you can actually buy veggie wash. What I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna move those guys over and then I'm just gonna rinse this real quick. Just to get all these seeds off. Just rinsing with water. You don't have to do anything fancy really. So next, let me move my extras over here. Now we'll go ahead, let's do some yellow squash. Try to cut it as close to the end as possible to get that stem off. Don't want to eat that, it just doesn't, it just doesn't taste good. It's too crunchy, tastes like dirt, you're not really going to want it. And again, thin slices. 
thin slices. Try to go as thin as possible. And take your time with it. If you're not used to doing this, this is something new to you. You do not have to go as fast as I'm going. I'm only doing this for the sake of, I have not quite learned the whole speed up process on the cameras yet. It's been a very long time since I've made videos. So that's all right. Hopefully by next week, I'll have it figured out for you guys. So then you can just get a speed up version me cutting these. Now as many veggies as I have here, this would normally cover like a casserole pan, like a pretty, pretty big size pan. We're going to put these guys in a bowl. Now I will say with zucchini and squash, if you feel like when you're putting it into the pan, your slices are too big, just do what you did with the eggplant and then just cut them into quarters. Does not have to be perfect and you're not always gonna have your veggies be the same size. This is the first time that I've had my yellow squash slices be like this. That's not usually what happens. <clears throat> All right, now let's do green, and then we'll do the tomatoes. I always try to do the tomatoes last or try to do them in a different bowl just because of the liquid. And now I still got these yellow bell pepper seeds all stuck to me right now. That's all right. Cut as close to the stem as possible. Flip it around, cut the end, and slice. Start putting them in the bowl. Run away. If you feel like one of your veggies has an icky spot, like it's it's brown, it's too beat up, just try and cut that out if you can. And sometimes your veggies are just bad altogether, so you just get new ones. Don't ever try to have a veggie that's that's brown. If it's brown and it's not supposed to be, you might not want to eat it. I feel like I have to say that. <laughs> I've seen some crazy things where people were trying to use very obviously dead food and they were eating it. And that's not good. And some people just don't, just don't know. And that happens too. You know, that's the whole point of these videos. I had plenty of people who wanted to know some of my recipes. I had people who wanted to know how to do certain things, different techniques. And a lot of times a video, a video is a lot better. It definitely goes a lot better than trying to take pictures of everything. So one thing I'm going to do, we're going to take... Our bell pepper and we're gonna cut each slice in half you don't have to be as aggressive as I am with it but this is just what I'm used to doing you can definitely sit and just go like that it's completely up to you on what's most comfortable for you take these guys. Be careful when you pick up your veggies with your knife like this just so you don't slice your hand. 
you're going to want to try and keep it like this. You want to keep the blade almost away from your hand where the side of your hand is touching the side of the blade and not the bottom of it. Don't want to cut yourself. Absolutely not. That's not going to be good. Okay. Now we're going to cut our tomato. So some people have different ways of cutting it. I've definitely cut it where I did like this. And then I've cut out the core. I've done where I've sliced it this way. I've even done where I've sliced it this way. It's completely up to you on how you want to do it. But you're going to slice it. Tomato slices, you're going to want them to be just a touch thicker than everybody else. And that's only because they are usually so liquidy. And here, let me show you. Since we've got that stem piece right there. Cut. Cut. And cut. Almost like you're turning it into a square and then just pull it away. So cut it on the sides and then cut it at the end and then just move it on over. You can even while it's still on here, if you wanted to try and take the whole thing, you can sit and try and do it like this and cut it out. So what I did was side, side, underneath, and then below it, and then it should just pop out. Definitely watch your fingers when you're cutting it like this, and your fingers are definitely going to be in the way. If you have a hard time cutting your tomatoes, because sometimes the skin is thick, one thing you can do while you're holding it, take the edge of the knife, stick it just a little bit, just enough to make a little slit, you see there? And then slice. When you have the knife this close to your hand, definitely take your time. Be gentle with it, be careful with it, you don't want to get caught. I'm going to say that repeatedly because I don't want to see anybody doing this. And they come back and say, well, I got cut. Well, I told you, be very careful, don't get cut. So now we're going to cut our little slices like this. We're just going to cut them in half and move them over to the corner here. Cut them in half, move them to the corner. Mm -mm. We got a little bit of a bottom stem. That's all right. Bottom stems are easier because there's just one little piece. Let me just cut them out and move over. If you feel like your slices are too thick, you can always go eggplant style and quarter them. Because you want to try and get your slices to be generally around the same size. Granted, there's only so much that you can do. But that's all right and we'll leave this little guy like that he's good he's good let me wash my hand don't ever if somebody ever says wash your fruit wash your veggies wash your meat because you should you should most definitely wash your meat before you cook it and um in one of my next videos next week i already have everything set up for that one you're don't put soap don't put soap and water on anything get an actual cleaner for that with meat at a minimum lukewarm water and just rub it in your hands with the water but i'll show you guys that when we come to that move my excess over here out of the way move my knife tomatoes are gonna shift up to here I prefer this is a plastic cutting board I most definitely prefer the glass but I needed something bigger and I don't know where my large glass cutting board is I prefer glass because I feel like it's not gonna absorb as much plastic is more absorbent than glass is. it's easier to clean glass it's a little bit louder when you're cutting but that's all right that's all right so now we're going to bring over our pan. You're going to need just a small spoon. You don't need anything fancy for this. Can of tomato paste. Scoop it out. 
you're only going to put in as much as you need. And like I said, with the veggies, you're gonna only going to cut as many as you need for the size of your pan. I'm only doing a small one now just so you can see how to make this. And you'll get an idea if you've got a bigger pan what you would need to do, how much you would need to do. Because you can always add to it as you're cutting, you know, as you're placing everything in. Now with the tomato paste, you're going to want to get a little bit of it up on the sides, smear it around. The olive oil. Oh, I forgot this one is brand new. I cook a lot, so I run out of things pretty, pretty frequently. So the olive oil, just a little bit. I'd say maybe two to three tablespoons tops. I don't even think I would do three tablespoons. I'd say more of one to two tablespoons. And you're gonna mix it. Mix it in with the tomato paste. So what this all does, adds more of a sauce to it and helps keep it from burning when it is in the oven. You almost want to do, if we're doing ratios, tomato paste to olive oil, I'd say two parts tomato paste, one part olive oil. If that helps, that gives you an idea. I want to mix this up pretty good. In with the paste. When it's mixed up pretty well, re-smear it. It's probably going to be a little bit harder because of the oil, but just bring your spoon around like this. Bring it around. Almost like you're icing it, like you're icing a cake. We're going to smear the spoon on there. Sometimes it just doesn't want to work. Now, if you're using a metal pan, I can tell you, trying to get this to smear in a metal pan is going to be a lot harder than a ceramic. Ceramic has more, I guess, texture to it, so then it's a little bit easier for you to smear it for it to grab on there. Let's move it up onto the sides a little bit, and then I'll smear it back into the bottom. Smear, smear, smear. Kind of looks like ketchup, I know. It most definitely would not taste like ketchup. I can tell you that. You can definitely taste everything as you're going. It, it just, it's probably not going to taste good with this olive oil going on in here. <laughs> but it's up to you. Let me move my spoon over here. Now, when you have it all in here, okay. Let me fix this. When you have it all in here. You have it in your pan nice and even as even as you can get it like I said none of this really has to be perfect none of this really has to be exact the only thing is is you definitely want that parchment paper to be specific you want to try to get your slices of your veggies as thin as possible so once we have that we're then going to take our rosemary and thyme leaves and you're just gonna reach in grab a pinch and sprinkle it. Now if you're very sensitive to seasoning, I wouldn't suggest doing as much as I am, but I like a ton of seasoning. I like a lot of it. I like to cover it. Just like with sauces, I like for it to be covered. I like to almost be like, oh my god, there's too much flavor going on here. That's what I enjoy. Do it for what you like. This is very much a recipe that you can really play with. I'm just giving you the basis on how to do it. I've had plenty of people who wanted to know how to do this, who wanted to see a video. So here we are. Now we're going to take our thyme. And you're just going to sprinkle it. Nice even amount. Nice even amount in there. Then what we're going to do, let me move my knife. Now is where we're going to layer it in. Okay, once you get your rosemary and thyme in there, which actually I feel like I don't have enough thyme. I can sprinkle just a little bit more. You know, you want equal amounts of rosemary and thyme going in there. We're going to start with, let's say, an eggplant. 
really is completely up to you on how you want to start it off. It is completely up to you. You can start it in the middle and make your way out, or you can start from the sides. I usually start from the sides. And I'm actually I'm going to do it like this. We're going to set it in a little bit up. Look, I guess technically a little bit a little bit sideways. A little bit sideways. And if my camera's moving, that's me touching my screen because my autofocus is not being very nice today. Next veggie. Okay. Next veggie. Okay, let me see if I can find my next veggie. Next veggie. Up to you on the order you want it in. If you want to do all of your eggplant, then all of your bell pepper then all of your tomato, and then all of your yellow, and then your green squash. And that's completely up to you on how you want to do it. If you do it one at a time, eggplant, bell pepper, squash, zucchini, tomato. Eggplant, bell pepper, squash, zucchini, tomato. You do it like that when you scoop it out to serve it, you're going to get one of each thing regardless of how you scoop it. But it's completely up to you on how you want to do it. So we're just going to continue on. Just gonna keep on going. Like I said, if you run out, you're sitting there placing in your veggies, and you run out of the veggies. This is why I always get extras. Ooh, wrong one. Look at me. I'm thinking, talking, doing all at the same time. So I feel this is too large. We're gonna cut him in half and place him in there. Oh, and there goes a tomato. If you start going through and you're running out of veggies, that's why I always get extras. If recipe calls for half an eggplant, one zucchini, one squash, one bell pepper, one tomato, double it up. It's always better to have too much than too little. It's definitely better to have too much than too little because nobody's going to complain if you've got too much food. Especially if you're feeding people. Okay, Mr. Bell Pepper. There you are. In case anybody's wondering, yes, I did state I live in Virginia. Yes, we do have that wonderful hurricane. Florence is supposed to be coming through. And none of us are very excited about it. But that's alright. We're prepared. This is why I'm doing this now. I wanted to be able to get this video done so you all can see it. So if you're not near the hurricane and you're gonna be fine, you can sit and go out, go to your grocery store and make this. Make this all yourself. And I say go for it. Make it yourself. It's delicious. If you like veggies, you're gonna like this. You're gonna like this a lot. And like I said, hopefully next time I'll figure out how to do the whole speed up thing. So that way while I'm doing this, it'll sit and just be like, and it'll be done. Until then, and hopefully maybe when I'm editing this, I can figure it out then so it's not as bad for you guys when I post it. But if I can't figure out, this is more of a, a warning than anything else. You're going to sit and watch me doing this for a little bit. That's all right. It's not going to take very long. Because we're about to come up to the very interesting part of this. The turn. So when you get here, you've got a circle going on, right? How do we get it in the middle? Well, you can either just keep doing multiple circles. Or what I do is I slightly turn my last piece a little bit and then we're just going to bring it in like that hopefully you all can see that pretty well you see how we're turning it in 
No, if it would let me have a piece, we're just turning it inwards. So it's just a slight little bit, just enough. It doesn't have to be fully turned. Just enough that you just keep it going so then it's going to come in this way. Okay? Put that guy there. You guys are going to be so glad when you make this at home and you try it because it is so good. It is so good. I love this. My mom's going to be happy when she comes home and sees that there's ratatouille. <laughs> in the oven. <laughs> Tomato, eggplant, bell pepper, yellow squash, green squash, aka zucchini, tomato. We're just gonna keep it going. Just keep it going. This is, okay, so this is the most interesting part, is when you start getting in towards the center of it. What you're going to do here, you're almost going to like just shove the stuff in there. You're just going to start shoving pieces until it's full. Let me get one more piece of this. And right in here like that that's how it looks raw that is how it looks raw let me clean off my hands a little bit I like to have clean hands now the fun part with this you're gonna go back to your olive oil okay put your thumb over it like this because you're only needing to do a little bit of a drizzle and just very carefully, if you can see what I'm doing. Drizzle your olive oil over top. Don't dump it out. Don't completely saturate it. Just a little bit of that on top. What that will do, that will help with keeping it from burning. That's the whole point of the olive oil in this. Let me clean that off of my thumb. We're gonna take our salt and just, just a little bit. I'm watching it as it comes out. You don't wanna dump too much. Just a little bit where you can see, you can see an okay amount on top of majority of the veggies. Easier if you have a grinder, more control to it than a shaker. Now we're gonna take peppercorn grinder and you're just gonna cover, do a nice, good coating on top of the pepper. And I'll bring this up closer to the camera so you all can see it. I'm just moving and looking. Hopefully my head is not covering the camera. I like a lot of seasoning, a lot, a lot, a lot of seasoning. See, you can see, let me focus in on it, you can see all the pepper and the salt, you want to do more, I do more pepper than I do salt, I definitely do more pepper than I do, than I do salt, and I'm trying to get this dude to focus in and it's just being so difficult with me today, but that's all right. So now we have our nice, nice little unbaked ratatouille and our escape tomato over here. Parchment paper. Gonna need some scissors that I definitely forgot to take out. That's all right. And I don't know who's been touching my parchment paper, but it's a little wonky right now. <laughs> Let me move my bowls. So now, scissors, parchment paper. Just lightly place it over top. 
does not have to be perfect because you're going to have to shape it. Let me see. And as you can see, I'm sure if you use dark enough stuff, you can definitely see through it. And just cut it around. Scissors are not the best in the world, but it's alright. Let's move our excess out of the way. Here we've got our little our little piece. We're just gonna set that on top of space. It's just gonna sit there like this, okay? Not anything fancy. Not anything fancy at all. Okay, so now You've got it in your container, you've got your parchment paper over the top. Now what we're going to do, we're going to open up the oven and just place it in the oven. Super simple. You're going to want to definitely do it at least middle rack. I would definitely say at least the middle rack. I wouldn't put it up too high. I wouldn't put it too low. You can definitely do it lower on a lower spot than you would a higher spot. I definitely would keep it on the middle rack. You're gonna bake it 375. We're gonna put on a timer. We're gonna do our timer for an hour and 10 minutes. Turn that on and then be back in an hour and 10 minutes. We're gonna check it, see if it's ready. The biggest ones, the rest of the veggies are going to cook pretty quickly. They're really not going to burn, but they're going to cook a lot quicker than the eggplants. Eggplants are the ones you're going to have to worry about. Eggplants always take longer to cook. They just, they just do. They just do. So that's what you're going to be looking for. You're going to see if your eggplants are cooked, if they're soft enough, if they're ready to come out. Um, when we come back in an hour and 10, I will take the camera. I'm not going to put it in the oven, but I'll put it just enough so that you can see what I'm talking about when it comes to those eggplants. You'll be able to see that kind of softness, that kind of look, that coloring. You'll see what you need to look for when you do it. Okay? Okay, guys, here we are 20 minutes in. And, I mean, I'm sorry, not 20 minutes in. We got 23 minutes left on the timer. And if we take this, let me see if I got it. It's going to be very hot. And my tongs are always, always disappearing. So, you're just going to want to grab this, lift it up, look at it. Not quite there yet. Not quite there yet. Let's see if we can get this to go back on. I'd say probably about. By the time this 20 minutes is up, we'll look at it, see where it's at, check it, and then go. Okay, timer's gone off. Woo! Steam. Gonna check. It's looking pretty good. But what I'm gonna show you, if you all can see, you see how it's not quite. That's the eggplant. Not quite mushy. Some of it isn't quite as mushy as we want it to be. You want it to be a little bit softer that you want to be able to when you grab it it really mushes let's put this back on and timer I'd say about 15 more minutes this, of course, this will always depend on, you know, what do you have it in, um, what kind of container it's in, where you have it set on the rack, 
all of that all of that varies you just gotta watch it but definitely minimum of an hour and 10 hour and 15 okay 15 minutes are up let's check it oh yeah that's more of what I want to see my paper up here. That's more we want to see. Look at how soft. More translucent. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is this is exactly where we want it to be at. This looks good. Oh yeah. That's good. So now. We need to get our oven mitts, hot plates, whatever you have. Mine are our Food Network, and they've actually got the grippies on them. We're going to grab, take it out, set it up here, close up the oven, and we need to turn the oven off. Oh, yes. This is what we want to see. This looks good. This looks fair. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, goodness. Okay. Now that it is out of the oven, let it cool off a little bit before serving it. It's definitely a little bit hot. I let it sit for a couple minutes, but I'm going to go ahead and get a plate out. And we're going to scoop it up, put it onto the plate, just so you can see what it looks like. And then I'll even go over some other things that you can make to go with it. Okay. So we're going to get out our nice little serving spoon. Hold up. Oh, goodness. I've got ratatouille right here. I'm going to move some other things over. got the ratatouille right here. Any kind of serving spoon would work just fine. And you're just going to scoop on in there. Look at that. Oh yeah. That's good. Get in there. Get all of it. Mm-hmm. Good. And that is it and then you just dig in dig in for it it's good it's good I'm just trying to open it up to let it cool off a little bit what I would recommend having with this would be either some kind of a chicken you can do a salt and pepper chicken where you just almost like a dry rub on the chicken breast sprinkle a little bit of salt and pepper rub it in cook it in the pan about five minutes both sides depending on how thick your chicken is i usually do the skinless boneless chicken breasts you can do that to have it go with it you can make lemon rosemary chicken you can do some potatoes, roast some potatoes to go with it. You can roast some asparagus to go with it along with the chicken. If you're not a chicken person, you could definitely do a steak to go with it. A steak and a baked potato or a steak and a sweet potato to go with it. There's many things you can go with it. It's a very basic, very simple dish. Very simple dish. And you can definitely have so many things that go along with it so well. You can even have pasta. Make yourself some good pasta to have go with it. Either garlic parmesan pasta, chicken alfredo pasta, or just your regular spaghetti. Have it, have this on the side, it works. You could probably even, if you really wanted to, you could probably even mix it in with the spaghetti. It works very well. Now let me see how it turned out. It's super hot. Oh, yum. Yum. Mm hmm That's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. 
Well, that turned out really good. Really good. I should have put a little bit more rosemary and thyme in the bottom of it, though. But that's just me. You can definitely play with it, try it. As you can see, you can see how long it took for us to cook this. I originally put a minute 10. I ended up having to add an extra 15 minutes onto that to get the eggplant exactly where I wanted it to be at. But this is this is very good, very good, nice and simple. Everybody loves it. This is a very good recipe to go with. Alright guys, there you have it. We have our ratatouille, all good, all nice and cooked. Let me move it over so we can see it. Very delicious, very delicious. Like I said, you can. there's so many things that you can make that go with this so well. It would just be perfect. Or you can even eat it just like this. You know, make a bigger portion, make a bigger dish of it. And put it together in a bowl, in a plate to get to work with you. It's so good. It's definitely good. Next week, I already have everything ready for next episodes for next week for Cooking with Taylor. So stay tuned for next week. I will try and do it on a Tuesday like I did today, but we will see. We will see how that works with this hurricane that's coming in. I do have everything. Next week's dish is going to be an experiment of mine that I did that is very much loved by a lot of people. It is what I call Italian dressing chicken. It's it's very, it's very good. So we'll be doing that next week. I do take recommendations. If you have a dish of yours that you absolutely, you love, you want to see somebody make it, you need some help with making it, you know? Some people need a more of a visual than reading an actual recipe. I can do that. Leave me a comment and I will say I will try to make that. I can't make everything but I will try my best to make your suggestion and just stay tuned to see if you see that in coming in. Alright everybody, have a good one. Everybody on the East Coast and around Texas, stay dry, stay safe, get plenty of food and water and flashlights and candles. See you guys next week.